Standard 5th Subject EVS 1 Chapter 2 Motions of the Earth Dear students, you have already come across the concept of rotation. So let's revise. Try this. Take a top, spin it and observe its movement. The top turns around itself. Any object that turns about itself actually turns around a certain imaginary line. So you can see in this figure here the imaginary line shown as a dotted line. The turning of an object around itself is called rotation and the imaginary line around which it rotates is called the axis of rotation. So now that you know about the concept of rotation, let's learn about the Earth's rotation. Try this. Take a globe like the one in the picture and spin it. Note the line around which it rotates. Now take a plumb line and hold it close to the globe as shown in the picture. So you can see a plumb line like this. If you cannot get a plumb line, tie a long thread to an eraser and make one. You will see that the plumb line and the earth's axis. So where is the earth's axis? This one. This is the earth's axis. You can see it's labeled as axis. So you will see that the plumb line, this plumb line and the earth's axis makes an angle. They are at an angle to each other. That is, the earth's axis is inclined. You can see inclined. The earth rotates with its axis inclined like this. The line NS, you can see this line which is labeled as NS, is in the picture, shows the earth's axis. It passes through the center of the earth. The points end and the point S, both are called the poles of the earth. So you now you know that N is the north pole, yes, whereas S is the south pole. Now dear students, if a circle is drawn around the surface of the earth, exactly in between the north and the south pole, in between them, then what will happen? So, if this circle is drawn in between the north and the south poles, what will happen? It would divide the earth into two equal parts. So this imaginary circle is called the equator. The two equal parts it makes of the earth are called the northern hemisphere. This is the entire northern hemisphere. You can see the label part. And the southern part is called the southern hemisphere. So the two equal part it makes of the earth are called the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere respectively. Now try this. Stand a candle in the middle of a large table. So you can see this candle. You can try this activity at home under adult supervision. So stand a candle in the middle of a large table. And then draw a big circle around, you can see the circle. So draw a big circle around the candle. Place a globe at any point on this circle. So at this point we have placed the globe. Then you have to light the candle. See that it is dark in the room. You should do this activity when it is complete dark. Suppose that the candle is the sun. So now the candle is going to play the role of the sun. Now looking at the globe from the direction of the north pole, turn it anti-clockwise. You can see the direction of the arrows, anti-clockwise. This is how the earth rotates. Okay, so this is exactly how the earth rotates. That is, it rotates from west to east. From west to 
east. As the earth rotates, its different paths come into the light of the sun one after the other and turn away from it also in the same order. So this will give rise to what? Exactly day and night, sunset and sunrise. So let's learn about sunset and sunrise. Try this. Stick a bindi. You can see in this image a red bindi here. So stick a red bindi on the globe. Set up the previous model of the globe and the candle. Turn the globe anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise means from west to east. Note when it is sunrise. So whenever you see that the part of the globe is facing the sun, that part is in daytime. So when it comes in the daylight, you will say it is sunrise. Then the middle part will be noon. And finally, as it goes further, it will be sunset. So, turn the globe anti-clockwise, that is from west to east. And note when it is sunrise, noon and sunset at the location of the bindi. So, this bindi will give you the exact time of sunrise, noon and sunset. After one sunrise, note when the next one occurs at the bindi. You will see that this happens when the earth completes one rotation that is when it makes one complete turn around itself. This period of time that the earth takes to complete one rotation is called a day. A day has two parts. Daytime, so whichever part is facing the sun is daytime or the candle which is the part facing the candle is daytime and the part which is in darkness is the night time. So, we can call, simply call it day and night. For the purpose of measuring time, we divide the whole day into 24 parts, each of which is called an hour. So, now dear students, you that you know about daytime, now let's learn about a year. Try this. Now, move the globe along the circle on the table. So, suppose this was the table and we have placed the globe and move it along the circle of the table that you have already prepared. As you do this, keep rotating the globe and ensure that the axis does not change its orientation. So, you will keep rotating the globe and see that this axis will remain in the same position and keep rotating the globe. Eventually, the globe will come to its original position. Okay, on the circle. This is how the earth revolves around the sun even as it rotates around itself. The period of time the earth takes to complete one revolution around the sun is called a one year. There are about 365 days and 6 hours in a year. So now I hope you are clear with the concept of sunrise and sunset and a year. Now let's learn about a leap year. In the Gregorian calendar, the year is taken to have 365 days. So every year we have 365 days. It means that it counts 6 hours less every year because one year consists of 365 days and 6 hours. So what happens to the 6 hours? That makes 24 hours or one day in every four years. Six fours are 24. So every four years, one day is counted extra. So where do we count this day? To make up for this lost one day, the month of February in the Gregorian calendar, that is the calendar that we use, has an extra day every fourth year. That year is called a leap year and it has 366 days. Okay, instead of 365 days. And when is this day? In which month? Yes, it is in the month of February. February has 29 days instead of 28 days when it is a leap year. So, 2020 was a leap year. Next leap year will be after 4 years. That is 2024. And so on. That means in the table of 4, every year we will get a leap year. Now students, do you know, you know that the length of the day and night is not always equal. During summer you must have seen the days are longer. During winter 
days are shorter. So this happens because of the earth's inclined axis and its revolution around the sun. You can see now that you know what are the axis of the earth. The earth's axis is inclined because of its inclination and the revolution around the sun. We see this duration of daytime and nighttime different in different seasons. So let's start in the northern hemisphere what happens. Look here in this figure particularly. In the northern hemisphere here. Between 21st March or say 22nd March also. Days depends. So 22nd March or 21st March. And between 21st March to 23rd September. Right beginning from here till this position of the earth. Okay, the days are longer than the nights where in the northern hemisphere. Why? Because you can see the northern hemisphere is facing the sun maximum during this period. So, that is it is summer in the northern hemisphere. However, during the same period, let's look at the south now. In the southern hemisphere, the nights are longer than the days. Why? Because it is away from the sun and it is winter there. So the earth gets less heat in these parts and therefore it is winter in the southern hemisphere in this position. Now in the period from 23rd September from this position to 22nd March till here. What happens? The days are longer in which hemisphere? Yes. The days are longer than the nights in the southern hemisphere because the southern hemisphere is facing the sun directly now. It gets more heat and it is summer year. In this period in the northern hemisphere we will experience winter as the nights are longer. So the northern hemisphere gets less heat and it is winter there. So note that there may be differences in these dates due to the leap year. So sometimes you will see that this starts with 22nd March also as mentioned in the textbook. In India, summer, the rainy season and winter are considered to be the main seasons. We also divide the year into six seasons namely Vasant, Grishma, Varsha, Sharad, Hemant and Shishir. The cycle of six seasons is called the Ritu Chakra. Many of our festivals are connected with the seasons. Many of our songs and games are also related to different seasons. So dear students, can you tell me now, what is the name given to the changing shapes of the moon that we see? Yes, they are called the phases of the moon. You are already aware about it. Then can you tell me, what are the names of the days on which we see a full moon, that is a round moon? Okay, here in this picture you can see a round moon, a complete moon. Yes, that is called a full moon day. And when we do not see any moon at all, see here. Yes, it is called new moon day. So, let's learn about the full moon and the new moon. The moon revolves. You can see the moon's orbit here. The moon revolves around the earth. And the earth on the other hand revolves around the Sun, this is the Earth's orbit. However, these two orbits intersect. Intersect means they come together at a point. Let's see, the Moon's orbit is this. At this point, it is meeting the Earth's orbit. That means the orbits are intersecting there. Hence, the Sun, the Moon and the Earth are not always along a straight line. They may be in different positions. We see half of the moon's surface which faces the earth. So this is the earth here and these are the different positions of the moon as it revolves around the earth. Only half of the part of the moon can be seen from the earth at any given point of time. The other half is away. Okay. That means from the earth we see only one side of the moon. The moon itself has no light of its own. So... What happens? We can see the moon because of the sun rays. Because of the sun lights, sun's light that falls on it. Okay. So on a full moon night, here you see a full moon night. 
we see the entire side of the moon one side that faces the earth so the do we see a round moon it is not actually full moon that we see we see one side of the moon which is a full moon to us whereas on a new moon day here you see no moon at all on a new moon night we cannot see any part of the moon so from the full moon to the new moon the illuminated part of the moon seen from the earth becomes smaller and smaller see this is full moon now it is becoming little less now it's become more less lesser and no moon at all we cannot see the moon at all so from new moon now to the full moon it grows bigger and bigger again you can see little little is appearing then more then bigger and full moon here these different shapes of the moon that we see are called the phases of the moon so now i hope you are clear what are the phases of the moon from full moon to new moon the moon disappears becomes lesser and lesser till no moon at all and from new moon to full moon the moon grows bigger and bigger till it becomes complete a full moon now let's learn about the lunar month and days which is also called the tithi you know that it takes 14 or 15 days from new moon to full moon this is fortnight of the waxing moon after the full moon the moon appears smaller and smaller you can see it becomes smaller and smaller okay and after 14 to 15 days it is new moon again that means the moon appears to be growing bigger and we see a full moon so smaller and smaller means new moon and this period is called the fortnight of the waning moon means moon is disappearing thus the period from one new moon okay so here you see new moon the period from one new moon to the next is complete of 28 to 30 days it is called the lunar month and every day of the lunar month is called a tithi so this is all about the lunar month and the days which are called tithis always remember the rotation of the earth gives rise to day and night the revolution of the earth and the inclination of its axis gives rise to the cycle of seasons the new moon which to the full moon which is 15 days is called the waxing moon shukla paksha and the full moon to the new moon which is again 15 days is called the waning moon that is krishna paksha the fortnight of the waxing moon plus the fortnight of the waning moon is equal to one full a month which is a lunar month so what we have learned let's revise the rotation of the earth causes day and night the revolution of the earth around the sun and its inclined axis together causes the seasons the revolution of the moon around the earth gives rise to the phases of the moon the period from one new moon to the next is called a lunar month it has about 28 to 30 days the fortnight ending on a full moon is that of the waxing moon the fortnight that ends on a new moon is that of the waning moon the days of the lunar month are called tithis so hope students you have followed this chapter do read this chapter from your textbook for a better understanding stay safe keep learning and thank you